and, and supper being ended, ended, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So there was 12 guys that Jesus had just invested three and a half years of his life with. One of them was already a traitor. One of them had already allowed Satan to take over. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and he was going to God, after supper, after the argument with the disciples, that the, the disciples were having with each other, rose up from supper. And Jesus decided, you know what? I've spoken enough. Let my actions speak louder than words. I'm going to put a picture in the, in the minds of these guys that they will not be able to forget. And so this is what he, this is what he did. And what I want you to know now is I, if you can just picture this, it will, it will, a picture's worth a thousand words. If you can picture this, it will change your life. It will change your description of what you are as a disciple of Jesus. So after supper, it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, rose up from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Jesus got up, he took a, laid aside his garments, and then he took a towel. Okay, what do you think it means to take a towel? What do you think it means? You grab a towel, that's exactly what it means. But it also is symbolic of the fact that you're a servant, right? When you see, uh, when you see someone in a restaurant come up to you with a towel hanging over their arms, what does that mean? They're there to serve, right? And so Jesus takes this towel and he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with the towel which he had girded. Now, back in the day, it wasn't like today. Today, uh, feet can be semi-clean, right? Because we wear socks and then we wear nice shoes like I have here. But back in the day, back in the day, that day, people wore sandals if they wore anything at all, right? And so all of the dust of the road was getting on their feet. And feet are not really one of the things that people brag, usually brag a lot about, right? Feet are th there for a purpose, and that is to get you from one place to the next. And nobody does a selfie, even now probably, of their feet too much, right? Feet, you know, there's a reason why feet get walked on, right? Because they're all the way down there. They get you where you're going, but they're not something you want to look at. And I'm guessing that most people don't even want to touch somebody else's feet. Sometimes I have a hard time touching my own feet. But you want to touch somebody else's feet. As a matter of fact, it was considered, you know, when you would come into, uh, come into someone's house, the servant, the slave, would be the ones that would wash the feet. And, and if you were a Jewish slave, you couldn't, it, you could, it, still, it had to be a Gentile slave, they said, to wash feet because it was that low of a job. And so here is Jesus. He comes, and, and of course, to wash someone's feet, what do you have to do? You have to get down on your knees. And so here's Jesus down on his knees. Now this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. This is their rabbi. This is their, this is their Lord. How would you feel if your Lord were down on his feet, down on his knees, ready to wash your feet? Yeah, something, something's wrong here. Some, something's wrong here. But it reminds us uh, of that passage that we mentioned a couple weeks ago in Philippians chapter 2 where it says let this mind be in you which is also in Christ who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God he was equal with God and yet he, he set that aside just like Jesus took off that garment and set it aside he set that right aside and became and humbled himself and became a servant and he took on the likeness of a man. He became a man, it tells us in Philippians. And this was a picture that Jesus was giving to them of what he wanted them to know. And that is that God was willing to come to earth, willing to sacrifice himself for us. And so he poured water in a basin and began to wash their feet one by one. And then he came to Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And he wasn't saying it as a question. Lord, 
Are you washing my feet? Like, you're not going to be washing my feet. You're not going to do that. Peter was always the one to speak up what everybody else was thinking. He speaks. He's the voice uh, of the disciples. He says, uh, uh, and um, Jesus said to him, what I am doing, do you not you do not now understand you do not understand now but you will know after this let me ask you this have there ever been things that happen in your life and you didn't understand but then later you said oh that's what God was doing has that ever happened to anybody yeah yeah we can't always understand right at the moment what God's doing and what was happening here one thing that was happening here was Jesus was washing their feet and it was a symbol of something what do you think you suppose that that symbolized? Servitude. Definitely servitude. What about that washing in and of itself? Cleansing, right? We, 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 the, the terms start being used, used over and over in the New Testament. The washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus was also, he was doing two things there. He was driving home a point about the first being last and the last being first. And how if you're going to be my follower, you're going to have to change positions. You're going to have to be, have a position of service. But he was also saying, you know what you need to realize is that by yourselves, you could not be clean. You could not be washed of your sin. I have to wash you. Peter said, no, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. If, you had, if I did not wash you, you have no part in me. Jesus was saying that something a little further than maybe Peter could understand right then. He said, you, won't, you don't understand this now, but you will later. And that is the only way. A lot of times we, I talk to people every week, and they have this idea, you know, if I can just be good enough, God's going to accept me. If I can just do all the right things, then I, I can make it. Jesus says the only way, the only way is for me to wash you. And he's looking forward to what is about to happen the next day. The crucifixion, three days later, the resurrection. The only way is to be washed by the blood of Christ. Simon Peter said, Lord, if not my feet only, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. So so Peter, not being one to, to mince, to, to go halfway, he said, okay, fine. If you have to wash my feet, wash my hands and my head also. I want to be completely in with you. And Jesus said this. Jesus said to him, he who, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is, needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So two things happened there. Jesus said, no, when I, what, I do, what, I, what I do represents that you're completely forgiven. You're completely cleansed by what I'm about to do. I don't, I don't need to wash your hands. I don't need to wash your face. Because in, in the custom that day, the thing that, that would be dirty is the feet. And so you need to wash the feet. You also think about what feet do, right? Feet bring you somewhere. Their feet had all brought them to this point where, where Jesus was at. They, had, they were followers of him. Once you're there, you have your hands to serve with. You have your, your mind. Jesus, that, that passage we just said said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. But he, said, he says, you're clean. You're all clean, but not all of you are clean. So all of you are clean that are my, my disciples. My blood is going to take care of you. But one of you has rejected my sacrifice. One of you has rejected this Passover lamb, which Jesus was now going to be the Passover lamb. So when he had finished, when he had washed their feet and taken up his garment, he sat down again. So looking at that symbolism again, you see that he finished the job. He washed all of their feet. He even washed the feet in this case, showing his, his compassion, showing his heart. He even was servant to this guy that had rejected him, that had betrayed him. But then he said he put his garment back, down, back on and he sat back down. This tells us in Philippians that, that, that uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of God the Father. So he, he puts back on uh, his position. He sits down at the right hand of God, and here Jesus uh, uh, symbolizes that. 
And he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am so. Jesus said, Look, I've told you, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. If you're going to be my follower, you have to do what I do. What have you seen me doing? You have seen me serving. You've seen me meeting the needs. You've put, putting myself last and putting each person first. The whole, the whole idea of coming to the earth was to serve, seek, and to save the lost. And so he said, if you're my follower, is it starting to, now that you've got this picture, and I'm betting that they could not take that picture out of their mind. I'm betting that from that point on, it even tells us that later when they thought back, they understood. Jesus, the creator of the universe, God Almighty, the one that knows all things, washed my feet. I can't get that out of my mind. And you know, you know, uh, um, these guys in the first century, apparently it stuck with them because in the next few years, they turned the world upside down. In the next few years, they, told, they couldn't stop talking about Jesus wherever they went. And people noticed the difference. And what I'm wondering is, has anything changed from the first century to the 21st century? Has anything changed from the... Is Jesus still alive? Is he still powerful? Do we still try to put ourselves first? We still try to put our, you know, it dawned on them. They got that picture and they said, wait a minute. If I keep putting myself first, Jesus won't be first. And the world will never get reached. But if I do what he said, and I got the picture in mind, if I do what he said, Jesus will do what I can't do.